So the um, the two framing protocols that we've been looking at uh, till now uh, were both byte oriented, but you don't have to do byte oriented. Um, you can do bit oriented, and of course the advantage here is that from when a um, a packet, sorry, a frame rather, uh, is required to be transmitted, you don't have to wait necessarily for the next byte boundary to come about, uh, or the next uh, yeah boundary of a group of bits. You can actually start sending immediately, uh, and uh, that can save a, a little bit uh, of time. Um, and so in the case of HDLC, we have this you know, beginning and end sequence, uh, which is a zero and six ones and a zero, uh, which uh, shouldn't occur anywhere else if you're using uh, you know, something like 4B, 5B encoding. And then you can have the header, uh, the body, CRC, uh, and the end. So again, it's the same kind of idea, it's just that we're using uh, fields that are uh, bit oriented rather than byte oriented to um, uh, save a little bit of time and just as a, an alternative approach to, um, uh, to this kind of thing. So to do the, um, uh, something like one of these bit-oriented protocols, so in the case of HDLC where we have six ones in a row is a special sequence. If the sender wants to send six ones in data, um, it sends the first five uh, and then it inserts a zero to make sure that that sequence can't occur. Um, so there's a small efficiency cost that may be incurred, uh, in fact, uh, with this approach. So again, it depends now on the exact values of the data you're sending as to whether it will be more or less efficient uh, in all likelihood. Um, so on the receiving side, we have to deal with the same thing. So we need to, um, you know, to look at the last five bits if they're all ones. And if it's a zero, then we go, right, okay, I need to remember the next bit actually is a data bit, uh, not one of these um, special markers. Uh, and if it was a one, then actually it's, uh, it's the end or start of frame marker. Uh, and we need to then resynchronize by skipping the next bit, which should be a zero, assuming that it's uh, there. Or if it's a one, uh, then actually it's an error. We had seven bits in a row, which should never happen. Uh, and there's some kind of framing error uh, that's gone on. So again, then the receiver will need to start again looking for uh, the uh, sequence of six ones uh, in an island like that again. So again, it's just it's a variety of different ways that uh, that this can be done. Uh, so let's have a look then at uh, error detection now more generally. So errors um, can occur for a, a wide variety of reasons. So it could be electrical interference, it could be thermal noise, it could be uh, that you know the the cable was briefly unplugged and plugged back in again, uh, or someone trod on it or something, and that caused uh, transient issues. Uh, radio interference. Uh, there's you know, solar activity at certain radio frequencies causes uh, significant interference. So the, whatever the causes, though, uh, you need to have ways of detecting those errors, and then ideally correcting them. Uh, there's two. You know, these are two distinct kind of tasks. Um, and you can make systems that can detect and correct certain numbers of errors without requiring retransmission, but there is an additional data cost. Um, or when you receive a uh, you know, data frame that has errors in it, uh, you could simply ask for the sender to retransmit it. Uh, and if the errors occur rarely enough, this can actually be quite an efficient approach. Um, if on the other hand, the errors occur quite frequently, then you probably want to have some kind of uh, error correction code in there. Um, these are often called a forward error correction code, an FEC, um, to try to uh, you know to uh, detect the bit errors and to fix them. So the detection part um, is generally speaking, relatively easy. You have some kind of checksum um, it doesn't. When we talk about checksum, uh, there are the very narrow definition of checksum, where you're literally adding up bits or bytes uh, in a data frame, such as what IP uses, um, or it could be some other uh, more sophisticated method. So you might have, uh, you know, in the case of BiSync, it uses a two-dimensional parity uh, system, um, or cyclic redundancy codes uh, that are used in a number of other protocols uh, that are a little bit more resilient uh, than a simple checksum. Because with a checksum if you had, uh, in two consecutive bytes, if you flipped 
the same bit in those two bytes, the checksum will still add up correctly because those errors will cancel out. There was a one that should be a zero and a zero that should be a one. If you put them back in, you switched where they were, um, it now looks like the original data and the checksum actually is the same, whichever way around it is. Uh, and so this is one of the reasons to, um, uh, to use more sophisticated uh, error codes, uh, error detection codes. So in the, the general case, really what we're talking about is some mechanism to be able to uh, tell if an error has occurred. Uh, so you could, an extremely naive approach would just be to send the data twice and compare it. And if they're the same, you say, well, chances are it's probably right. Uh, but we can usually get by using many, many fewer bits. Uh, so for example, with ethernet, uh, we can have, well, with jumbo frames now, you can have nine kilobytes of data, 9,000 bytes of data, um, which is 36,000 bits of data. But the CRC was still only 32 bits and still will pick up the vast majority of errors uh, because it's using uh, a more advanced uh, error detection scheme. In this particular case, it's a cyclic redundancy code. So the extra bits are redundant in the sense that they don't add new information to the message. They're actually metadata that is there to protect the data uh, in transit. So if both the sender and the receiver know the algorithm for working out the you know these additional bits, and if they add up correctly, then it's accepted. Um, if they uh, don't match what's expected, then it's assumed that an error has occurred. Um, now these kinds of checks actually occur in all sorts of systems, not just networks. So for example, if you have uh, a Visa credit card, the last digit of the credit card number is actually uh, a checksum based on the other digits. Uh, and you can search online, you can find the algorithm for that. And so this is one of the things that's used in websites. Uh, for example, when you put in a, a credit card number to check that it's valid. Uh, the very first check will be, is it actually a valid credit card number or not? So uh, this, yeah, error detection is obviously helpful because if you couldn't detect errors, then you would actually start processing things that were uh, not valid and that could cause all manner of uh, crazy kind of results. Okay, we'll have a look at that one in the next video.